What's going on, ladies and gentlemen, sinks and inks, and welcome to Lactic Acid. I'm your host, Dominique Smith. Today, on the actually, this is the second guest of the fall, so you know we are low key thriving uh, because the regular thriving is just a little bit too much, but we're getting used to it down here in Florida. But I have a legend, a big time baller, shot caller. 225 is what they do in the bench press, but she took it a step further. She ran that time in the marathon, and she is doing big things faster than the people listening to this and is only starting the pride of Colorado, Miss Laura Thweet. What's going on? I appreciate you coming on the show. How are you doing? I'm good, Dominique. Yeah, that was probably one of the best introductions I've ever received. So if you could come with me to all my races and just introduce me on the start line, that would give me some mad hype. I think that's what I'm missing. <laughs> Listen, I got you. I will be like the hype man of the 2004 Detroit Pistons when they won the uh, NBA Finals. I got you. Literally, okay. John, listen, John Elway, Russell Wilson, they have nothing on you. And if you saw his last game two weeks ago, then you would oh know what God. I'm talking about. It's too soon. I can't talk about it. Yeah. It's well, too guess soon. what? It's painful. It's, it's, <laughs> Y'all won. So, you know, give him praise. Give the Lord we praise. Did. Won. We did. He pulled it out. Uh, we got the W, but ooh, it was a tough W. But hey, as I always say, a win is a win. So you just got to roll with it. Uh, wow. But I'm still, I'm stoked that we got, I still can't believe we have Russell. So uh, I'm so, <laughs> he's one of my favorite athletes of all time. So when I heard he was coming to Denver, I like didn't believe it. And I, I had to read like a hundred news articles okay. before I was like, this is real. Like it's actually happening. This isn't a prank. <laughs> like this, this isn't is some psych <laughs> no it's like michael scott on the office like it's happening yes, it's, it's actually happening, happening. <laughs> yeah. so everybody's saying super bowl but listen russ listen play one well game at a time. Be, <laughs> one game at a time we need you to play well for that 285 million dollars and listen i'll take a few dollars <laughs> if you uh want to donate to the broke brothers foundation um can I get and, in on that too? <laughs> oh, of course. We, we got to do the athletes fun. Like, listen, she got the a Chicago, fun. Come on. <laughs> yeah, she got the Shy Town Marathon. We have to represent. So That's right. uh, uh, <laughs> definitely. And listen, it is not good to stress out there in altitude. So no. uh so it's hard enough to breathe, let alone breathe while you're stressed. So uh That's thoughts true. and prayers your way throughout this season. <laughs> All right. So I've been asking this question. It's a fall question. I live here in the state of Florida. And the one thing I love about Florida is we slowly but surely get into it. And by get into it, we only have two seasons, low key fall, <laughs> and then summer. So low key fall. I love it. That's, yeah, exactly, so, that's the perfect way to describe it. Yep. Basically, listen, <laughs> born and raised here, lived here 28 years, you know, as in those 28 years, it's, it's, it is what it is. How, but the, how long is low key fall? How many months do you get outside of summer? Uh, Florida's like the honey badger, so it decides to mix in. <laughs> uh, it does what it wants. Um, Fair enough. So, <laughs> so <laughs> you know, it, it's hard to say because, you know, uh, I'm a Christmas brother myself. That's my holiday season. Uh, that that's that's what I love fall fall and holiday season are one and one a so you know when September 20 whatever first day of fall hits you know I had to incorporate just a tad bit of Christmas music in there um <laughs> slowly uh, just get it queued up yeah slowly, I love it <laughs> you know a little boys to men sprinkling yep, a little yep. <laughs> bit of OJs and then you know when November hit listen it's Frank Dean all them Frank Dean Bean, all all of those We're guys. We're going hard once we, we hit are, November. We're just nonstop. Breaks are off. <laughs> it's like it's like hard whiskey. Like it's never had hard whiskey, but um, that's just it's like that happened. though. No chaser. We're just doing it. <laughs> like I always say, all thriller, no filler. Shout out to Straight No Chaser too, because you know they're on the list. Um, but any, anyway, back to the original question that I'm asking in the fall. So let's just say, you know. Chicago, the organizers of the Chicago, the New York City Marathon, as well as Yankee Candle, they had dinner one night. <laughs> Let's just say, I don't know, location. They went to somewhere, Breckenridge. That's my favorite place in Colorado. Nice. Went to Breckenridge and said, you know, this Laura runner, she's a really big doggone deal. And so now <laughs> that she has graced our marathons, we need to celebrate her awesomeness and the great things that she is doing on and off the running course. And so we want to do a custom fall promotion centered around the amazingness of Laura Three. 
And so here's what we're going to do. We are going to customize a candle from Yankee Candle in whatever scent she'd like. And then she's going to have to choose. Does she want a custom New York pizza? New York style pizza or a custom Chicago deep dish pizza? And what would she want on it? So what they need to know to, oh, and I'm sorry, you have to name the entire promotion. So the name that you give, the candles and the pizza will be the name of the promotion. So what they need is which style of pizza, New York or deep dish, the scent of the candle and the name for the promotion. Oh man. Okay. Um, well, I'm a deep dish girl. Ooh, so okay. obviously I would do deep dish. I didn't really have to think too hard on that one. Uh, my scent for the candle. Uh, pumpkin or cinnamon, mm. uh, cinnamon pumpkin. Could I fuse the two? You sure Those can. Are like my you two. Sure can. Okay. So I have deep dish cinnamon pumpkin. <laughs> What's the, the name of the promotion? Like, what we're calling this yes <laughs> i don't know um <laughs> uh what would you call that um <laughs> i mean the deep dish cinnamon I, pumpkin is a, i was gonna the, say do i yeah i feel like that's i mean can you how do you like top that like deep dish cinnamon pumpkin i don't i mean i don't know what to do with that <laughs> that's oh, a boy. lot right there <laughs> deep dish cinnamon pumpkin we could call it a flake, uh, a fall festival. I yeah, fall festival. I love it because it's it's just all the it's all the best things about fall. I don't know if deep dish is categorized as like fall, but for me it is because I plan to get some deep dish after I race Chicago in a couple weeks. So I'll be eating a lot of deep dish come October. So yeah, yeah, we could call it fall fall festival. I love it. Okay, well, we will get to the pizza game in a few moments, but as the official reporter of Flavor Town, all thriller, <laughs> no filler, I love it. The Fall Festival. It will be sold exclusively at your home goods. <laughs> so let's let's just go on ahead and jump into it. You, my friend, are a baller. Like on the running course, 225. There's a lot of things. I was looking up things productive that i can do in two hours and 25 minutes <laughs> and what'd you come up with nothing, <laughs> nothing. um <laughs> uh i'm just i'm just <laughs> being honest like essentially you could run in that amount of time from here to like i don't even know very far <laughs> have you ever i'm trying to very very, far. figure out how to phrase this question but You've accomplished so much and you are just to me like the best that's yet to come where you're concerned. Have you ever like taken a step back to realize like, dang, like I do this and I'm doing this and I'm pretty good at it and just, you know, kind of settling your accomplishments. Yeah. I mean, I, I try and do that. I think it's really important to take a step back uh, and be proud of what you've accomplished and be proud of the work that you've put in and uh, the years upon years of just investing, you know, time, energy, love and passion into something and kind of what comes from that. Um, you know, I think nowadays too, it's so hard because we get so like focused on one race or we get so caught up in just kind of where we are in that moment, which there's nothing wrong. I mean, I'm also one to try and be in the moment more. Um, but sometimes when I'm like, so focused on something, you know, I'm looking around and I'm kind of watching everyone else do, uh, and go after, you know, similar things to me. And I start comparing myself, uh, and I start questioning, you know, have I done enough? Like, am I good enough? Like, can I do what they're doing? So I think it's really important when you kind of start to have those doubts creep in and you're kind of playing that comparison game with yourself, uh, to whatever it is, it is really important to take a step back and, you know, look around and just be like, hey, like, I deserve to be here. Like, I've worked really hard. I've done some really amazing things. Like, I'm a badass too. Like, 
these other women out there, yeah, they're badasses, but like, so am I, like, I deserve to be in the conversation. And um, I'm always telling young girls exactly that, like, own your accomplishments, like own your successes. I think sometimes we're so afraid that by doing that, we're going to come off as like arrogant or cocky or like, you know, full of ourselves. But I think there's a way to do that where you're just owning how hard you've worked and you're owning moments that you're really proud of that are motivating you and reminding you as you kind of build to the next moment that you can do it, you know? So I think it's so important to do that. And I try and do it more uh, than I probably do. (laughs) So there's a quote that I love. And the quote pretty much says, if it walks like a duck, talks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it's not a doggone mongoose. (laughs) And so... I I thought uh, you were going to go somewhere else with that. That's really good. Where did you think I was going? (laughs) I thought you were going to say it is a duck. Oh, well, I mean, you can. You can say it is a duck, but it at the same time, it is not a mongoose. Yeah, Um, I love that. That's my new favorite way to phrase that. (laughs) But that's to say that's i mean it's just is what it is like you run 225 you've accomplished great things fifth fifth in you know the trials i don't think people realize how hard it is just to finish (laughs) let alone (laughs) you know in the top five you know of one of the prestigious you know trials that in running for me marathon runners and i'm really excited to branch out on the show to have more of them um because i don't understand them i don't understand y'all like and (laughs) i guess i don't understand myself sometimes i'm like why do you do this (laughs) so to me and you i mean listen you just put a fastball (laughs) over home plate to hit this home run of a question that i'm trying to ask it's it's there are three events to me in the sport of track and field and just running in general that require bravery four i'll give it four in no particular order the pole vault uh because you know we had john anderson on the show he made a comment about mondo he's like you know one day he's gonna vault so high he might come down with snow and (laughs) that's very (laughs) that's very possible um two I can't wait to see that. <laughs> Listen, come down looking like Frosty the Snowman. I'm just <laughs> um, two would be the marathon. I, I don't really think I need to go into too much detail. Yeah, you can just say it, the marathon. Is, and is, three. <laughs> yes. Three um is the hammer. Yeah. Uh, because I this this show is about throws. My background is in throws, whether it's coaching or competing on the high school level. I wasn't that good, but I do know there's some events where if that hammer hits the wrong way, um, <laughs> night night. And for any race, any runner who lines up against Sydney McLaughlin. Uh huh. Um, I yeah. I is, was hoping you were going to say that. Yeah. That's Ooh. just. We saw some things a couple of months ago in all of those events, but man, we saw some things in that 400 meter hurdles. Oh, I, you know, would love to put the only reason I'm not saying Shelly Ann is because Shelly Ann uh, has been beaten, even though Sharika Jackson is getting into that category. But Mm -hmm. those are the four that require bravery. Do you realize how brave you are in? And lining up to each marathon, doing each training session. Uh, I mean, you run, like, if you put the amount of miles that you run, like, a year. There's that song, I've traveled everywhere in this here land. I've been there. Like, that's that's you. You you literally run across the United States. Um, Yeah. And that requires a significant amount of bravery to line up, to put your body through an event where you're asking it to give everything it has and then some knowing that it's a trap marathon is a trap because <laughs> I, i've watched i've watched a couple of marathons and it's like mile 16 17 or like 16 through 19 mm-hmm. and like you feel like oh my gosh you got the momentum and everything 
only five miles left, and I personally, I'm or only a few miles left, and I'm like, only three, four miles left. Like, are you crazy? <laughs> like, like, gosh, my kneecaps are hurting just listening to that. But, I felt that way in New York last year. I, people were like, only five k. I was like, only five k. Like, do you like, even know what you're saying to me? Like, I don't know if I can physically make it three more miles. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. Like. <laughs> You so don't push, worry i think that too <laughs> yes like you put, but listen if somebody would say listen we're gonna run a, a 5k i'm like who is we i'm not um <laughs> you know you know you're running a 5k I'm, yeah good for you i'm not doing yeah, it <laughs> y'all we say y'all you all y'all <laughs> are running a 5k anything with a k in it that's not a dollar sign is nothing <laughs> that i'm interested in participating <laughs> but you I don't know. There's just something about the marathon that even watching it's like Otis Redding had a song called Pain in My Heart. Pain in my heart. <laughs> and there are parts of the marathon that I just feel that pain. 100%. 100%. And, so, and regardless of the result, the fact that you even attempt it and try it and succeed and continue to succeed is just marvelous. Do you ever consider like the bravery well, let me ask, do you consider yourself brave and have you ever put it in the context like it takes a pretty brave person to do what I'm about to do because 99% of the population would stop at mile four and a half. <laughs> I guarantee you, if you told them if at mile four, four or five, oh, how much longer I got to go? Oh, about 15, 16, 17. Bye. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> no. Yeah, I mean... I guess I don't think of it put it that way. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. I think playing on that start line and you're staring down 26.2 miles. Um, who, like anyone, no matter what level you're running at the marathon, anyone that stands on that start line is brave. Um, it's It's such a hard event and you pour yourself into you pour your everything you have into one or two marathons a year and like that's it like you you get one or two shots at this distance to really nail it uh and so it just it takes everything you have um so yeah I definitely I mean I came out of Atlanta feeling brave I felt like I ran a really brave race and I poured everything I had into that and I raced it the only way I felt like I could race it to make that team um, so I felt brave after Atlanta. Um, but yeah, after every marathon I do, regardless of the result, I always make sure to have that self-reflection that we were talking about earlier, where you're just like, whether or not this was exactly the day I wanted, I got from start to finish and I gave it absolutely everything I had. Um, and that's all you can do. And I'm always really proud of myself after a marathon. Cause I'm like, girl, you just ran 26 points. You just Amen. raced 26.2 miles. You know, again, whether it was your A, B or C race, it doesn't matter. You, you get to that finish line and you cross it and you're like, Oh, thank God. Like <laughs> I, I freaking made it. I survived another one. <laughs> like, oh my God. Uh, yeah. So, uh, it's quite an event. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Some days I'm just like, you know, I said, I would never do one back when I was first starting out. I was like, I'll never do that. Cause I looked at people like that. I'm like, why, why would you ever do that? Like, how are you capable of racing 26.2? Like, I will never do that. And then like, here I am What <laughs> trying made to make you a do career it? out of it. What, what, <laughs> Honestly, what <made> you do <laughs> it? I, 2015, so it was right, but it was the year before the track trial or the Olympic trials. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. And I had just come off world cross that spring and I had a stress fracture in my foot. So but my track season was over at that point and I was rehabbing and trying to figure out like how I wanted to end the year and build momentum going into the Olympic year in 2016. Uh, and my coach at the time was like, what do you think about running the New York city marathon? And I was like, why would I ever do that? Like, I absolutely do not want to run the New York city marathon. And he was like, no, just think about it. Like, you know, like there's no pressure, right? Like it's a completely different event. Uh, it's something brand new to train for. You can't really compare it to anything, you know, and regardless of how it goes, it just gives us a really good, like building block to end this year and then build our track season for the trials next year. Um, and with the 
trials in 2016, a lot of Americans weren't going to run New York because it's in November. Um, so it was kind of an opening to just like give it a shot with like very low pressure. Uh, and New York's such a hard one that time is kind of irrelevant, really. Like you're just racing the race. It's like cross country over 26 miles. Uh, so I was like, all right. Like I kind of got talked into it. Um, but then the night before New York, I had a huge breakdown <laughs> at the technical meeting and I started sobbing. And I was like, I can't do this. Like, I can't do this. Why did I think this was a good idea? Because at the tech meetings, they put up like the, the whole course, they walk you through every single mile from mm -hmm. start to finish. So I'm <laughs> watching all like, I'm watching how far I'm going to have to run. And I'm like, I, like, I can't do that. Like, how in God's name am I ever going to do that? That so is I so broke real. Down. <laughs> broke oh out of the tech goodness. meeting and I went to my coach and I was like I can't run tomorrow like I can't do it he was like what and I was like no I can't I'm out like I don't want to do it listen I <laughs> so that is so real listen if somebody came to me and was just like listen this is the obstacle course of your life and this is what you have to go through again are you guys ready? I would have been like, I hope y'all ready because I'm going to be on the plane or I'm going to be, you know, getting some pizza or especially at New York, all the food. I'll watch it and, you know. I'll watch it. Yeah, exactly. I was drink like, something. I will watch yeah. you suffer. But I was I'm like, not can I just it. wait at the finish line and like say that I did it? Like, I don't actually want to do that. Um, oh. So, yeah, it was terrifying. And I was like, yeah, I don't know who does this. Like, why did I get talked into this? uh and honestly before every marathon I have like somewhat of a breakdown like two days before uh because again the reality of it and just it is and then everything you pour into it and then just looking at it you're like oh my god like how am I gonna do this <laughs> I just you, have you, that moment before every marathon where I'm like oh my god how are you gonna do this it's like you know you're gonna be in pain <laughs> you do like, yeah it's like you literally, know what's coming you can't hide you can't hide from it <laughs> but you guys have so much swag when you get to the line like everybody's i play football and other sports and so i know you know just that yeah that head busting like yeah well we're, we're gonna get it and i'm just sitting there like do they really i'm like that takes some bravery that takes that is a different level <laughs> that's not even swagger that's like swagette um <laughs> that you have to have yeah you to, gotta have something <laughs> like you you cannot be getting because me i'm i'm looking i'll be standing there terrified i will be sitting there asking <laughs> like we used to sing this old hymn at church pass me not oh gentle savior that would be me singing hymns singing songs <laughs> of spiritual things to the lord giving my <laughs> living will right i couldn't do it but you guys are like like i don't know i always thought a good like way to from what i've seen and <laughs> what it looks like to some for some runners it's like eight mile eminem's eight mile yeah, palms 100%. are sweaty yeah. knees weak knees arms, weak, are, arms heavy. are heavy there's vomit on they're <laughs> singing on already <laughs> ready <laughs> mom's spaghetti they're nervous <laughs> but on the surface they look calm they're and like ready calm and ready to drop bombs <laughs> but they keep, keep on, on forgetting, on forgetting. <laughs> how far they gotta go <laughs> Under uh, percent. Oh yep, that's God. it. I mean, that's basically it in a nutshell. You just you nailed it. That's what is going through all of our minds. We're you trying know, to act cool and we're trying to act like, you know, we're we're you know, we're we want to be there, but deep down everyone er, deep down every marathoner is kind of like, oh shit, here we go. <laughs> like, <laughs> I would have been right. listen. I when those cameras pan out, listen, cut the camera off. I can't do this. Like I can't do this. You, you, you just need tears, to... like silently, just rolling down your face. Like everyone's like, "Oh God." What's that song? There's a song <laughs> that I've used that describes the pain of. See, I coach high school track and covered high school track, and there's a song that talks about the pain of it. How do I forget it? Oh, um, killing me softly, but not even <laughs> yes. by the not even by the fugees it's by roberta flack the original version like <laughs> yeah nice yeah the the marathon no the marathon is not a fugees like that bass no. like boom no you need that old school roberta flack just on the piano just playing her sorrows away that's yep. that, that's, that's the stuff. marathon in a song <laughs> but it's so uh... but i don't know if there's an event that is more rewarding from an outside all of this is from an outsider's point of view yeah um then the marathon like 
like when you it seems like you cross and it's it's kind of like you you're inspired i'm not inspired to run but i do take inspiration from like those who finish because it's like these people just accomplished something like really awesome Mm -hmm. so it's like it's almost well it's funny because when you look at the history of the event the first time anyone ever ran 26.2 miles they died when they like finished like that's the whole story of like um oh. oh my god i can't believe it's like the greek mythology i can't believe i'm like blanking on uh they di- that they died <laughs> yeah like philippides like the guy that ran he was delivering like a message uh oh my god i'm butchering the story i need to know my history better but anyway it's like <clears throat> it's kind of like how the marathon like first became like an olympic event but there was a messenger during like war times and he was trying to deliver a message from one side to the other and the only way he could do it was to run the 26 miles that separated the two sides to get this message to them and so he did he ran 26 miles gets there delivers the message to the general and then just dies on the spot and like that's how the marathon was like essentially born so like when you think of the history of the event you're like yeah like we are brave like lining up you know okay so that's nice (laughs) you do you take a messenger dying and let's let's make this a global thing let's just add locations let's add let's let's even make it difficult let's let's add some places like chicago and new york with some different climates and all that stuff that is just nice that is awesome we we just taking death and we just said let's make some money off of it let's make some money off of it whoever can survive like we'll pay them sure why not yeah we'll, we'll pay them we'll give them nice tv coverage you know yeah. we'll throw in give them a nike clothes. shirt yeah it's cool yeah, give them a t-shirt and everything make sure you got the ambulance finishers medal you know that's why everyone wears their finisher medals from a marathon so proudly like you show that off like you worked hard for that you risked your life for that literally, <laughs> you didn't literally. know what was gonna happen 26 miles oh that's a long time for something to go wrong that's what i you know like you never will- know you never I hope, know. <laughs> I hope that's not the story they tell you. <laughs> like going into it, you, you are standing on the, you know, the steps of our founder, the brave man who died. At the end. <laughs> he that's gone. how they he, get you to sign up. Yeah, he gone. He's not with he, us anymore. <laughs> he's gone. You know, may the good Lord bless his 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 soul. He gone. Oh, oh boy. Man. That yeah. took a, so you never I, want to do yeah, that escalated didn't it that took a weird I, turn i did not <laughs> of all the things i expected to talk about somebody <laughs> wrote a note ran 22 26.2 miles delivered then, it successfully and then delivered it, it <laughs> and then he's and he's gone he's gone and they were like and hey now, this could be an olympic event <laughs> And we have thousands of runners <laughs> who are taking part. Oh boy! Not only that, you have to pay in yeah, order a to lot do of money. It. Let's move money. on across country. Um, yeah. So next question. Uh... Next question. So first of all, y'all gotta realize something. This is not only the first cross country athlete I, I'm talking to on the show, or professional cross country, um, but she's a champion. Like, so when I say Laura is a big deal, I'm like Krusty Krab <laughs> Pizza kind of big. And you know how good that Krusty Krab Pizza was back on SpongeBob back in the day. We still oh, don't yeah. Have I love problem. that you just dropped Krusty Krab. Oh, yeah. Big SpongeBob fan. So. Yes. And she well lives played. and she lives in the town uh, that SpongeBob said the pioneers drove for miles, which is in Boulder. So it's there's a lot of uh I so now it makes sense why you live in Colorado. Uh um, yeah, because, see now you get it, it's come full circle for you now. Yeah, yeah it's come full circle. <laughs> Here's the thing, I and we're gonna get to the off running stuff in like 27 seconds. I cross country is so hype. When I was a senior in high school, I needed volunteer hours. And so I went to the cross country coach and said, <laughs> Can I help you guys? Just whatever. Do you need me to set stuff up? So I didn't know at the time that would mean, okay, you're the middle school assistant cross country coach. Now, listen, I'm a, I (laughs) throw the, I throw the shot put in the discus for a living. So, uh, you you know, I'm not, I'm not qualified (laughs) to do this. And I'm like, oh, and listen, it's one thing to coach high schools, but you have to be, 
Culture middle school that that's 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 different. That's different. It's a whole nothing. other yeah, it's a whole other ball game. <laughs> I can only that's imagine. nothing I would ever do. But <laughs> I loved cross country. Like I hated getting up because at Florida you have to get up. You you compete mm. with the roosters when it comes to getting up and going to the yeah. You got to beat that heat. Yeah. And so you know they're running at like eight nine seven eight nine, but I love it. Like it was so. There's just I don't I can't explain why it was so awesome and why it's so awesome in college and then you get to the pros and it's like running season's over it's like uh uh-uh, oh we got XC and everything Love what XC. are you I, I wish there was more cross country as a pro there's well, not enough cross country well we're gonna be covering it on lactic acid through the art of interviews um, now if anybody wants to pay me to come and cover your cross country meet as creatively as possible, hit me up at lacticacid at gmail.com. Oh, I, want you to co- at gmail.com. I want you to cover some of the, I coach uh, cross country at a high school here, and I would love for you to cover oh, some of our meets. That would be would, amazing. <laughs> anything to get out of this heat. Listen, just listen. I, I All right. If I, if I win Chicago, I'm going to fly you out here to cover our regional meet. <laughs> Listen, you ain't saying nothing but right. a word. I'm, listen, <laughs> if you're about it, I, I got you. I got you. I will be there. Uh, I would love to do that. So I need you to win Chicago. Okay, done. Um, <laughs> Hit so me up. <laughs> all of the runners who are competing in Chicago, I need you to drop out at mile 24. <laughs> you guys hear that? Everyone listening? <laughs> um, so that we can make this a reality. But why do you love it so much? I, I think I love cross country because I, that's where I got my start as a runner. Um, I kind of fell into it because as a lot of runners, I wasn't good at anything else. I tried soccer, tennis, golf, volleyball, basketball. Like I tried all the sports because I loved, I loved athletics and I loved the camaraderie of like the team and, you know, just being out there with your friends. And I loved sports growing up as a kid. Um, but I just couldn't quite find my fit in some of those sports right. um no hand-eye coordination whatsoever so I just struggled a lot of the time uh so when high school rolled around you know getting cut from some of those sports uh was definitely heartbreaking uh but then a couple of my friends were big Nordic skiers and they were going out for cross country to kind of do their dry land training before the season and they were like cross country is not a cut sport like anyone can go out for it and anyone can run and like you know there's a team component but it's also kind of individual and like you might like it and I was like okay I had no idea what it was um so that's kind of where I fell in love with the sport um and that's exactly why I love it because you have a team side of things where you're not out you're run you're out there running for something greater than yourself but you're also out there running for yourself and you're out there running to push your own limits and to reach your own goals and it's just you against the clock and you against the conditions uh and there's just a purity about it that I love so much um and so that's that's how I got my start and that's why you know I am where I am today because of my high school cross country team and so I think that's why I love it um the way that I do do you like the format of it <clears throat> just how it's just the scoring and because yeah. there's a huge team aspect of it. And I know there's a debate it's like, oh, no, we should change it up. But I'm curious for your coach as well. Like I said, double baller. So high school coach as well as uh, national champion. So double, double, double. Um, <laughs> how do you, from your perspective, you know, do you like how it's formatted on all levels, not just the high school level, but the college and professional level, or is there something that you would change about it? No, I mean, I like the format of it. I mean, again, I think like so much of what we do as runners, regardless of what your event is, is individual. And so I think for us, it's really fun to have that team component um, to kind of like mix that in where again, you're not just out there competing against yourself for yourself. You're out there competing with a team, with people who have trained as like as hard as you have, who are out there racing the same event, who are out there that have similar goals. And I think that's the magic of cross country. And I think having that team component just brings the best out of everyone. And I think especially at the high school and college level, like that's what makes it fun, you know, yeah. like to have that team component within running 
Um, and to have that balance of it, I think is so important to, for the integrity of what cross country is and to keep, to keep it, um, to keep it what it is for so many people. I think that's a big reason why uh, it has the draw that it has. Um, and th again, that's why I loved it so much because it had both of those things. Um, and you just get so close. Like some of, you know, my college teammates, even some high school teammates, like I'm still friends with those people today, you know, because of the yeah. bonds that you create out there doing such a difficult sport. Um, and being able to share that together with that team side of things, like, um, I mean, I wouldn't change that. Cross and as country. a coach, I wouldn't change that. Like watching my kids get to do that themselves now and watching them build through that together. Like I wouldn't change that. Cross country is the sport where it made me hate running. Like be like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Shot put in discus. I can cover this, but I remember my coach, shout out to uh, Ted Benz, the legendary Ted Benz. I think on this Sunday, we should go on a nice 18 mile run. I was like, oh boy, y'all have fun with that. You running into another county for yeah, was fun. Say. Like y'all are nice. Cause we had nationally ranked teams when I was in mm -hmm. you know high school, like Trinity Prep was nationally ranked. Holy Trinity was nationally ranked. Yeah. Let's go on. And they all went to like major division one schools. Let's go on a nice 18 to 20 mile run. And then we'll start. <laughs> I'm like, boy, let me get, pick up these uh, <laughs> implements again and not yeah, do this. You're like, yeah, uh, your boy's not coming with you. No, 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 no. I'm not even driving in a car with you. So, uh, 18 that's, miles that's, is a long way in a car, right? Like, no I, matter how you slice it. No, like, you're out on, there man. for a while. Yeah, like no, for four hours to run eight. No, <laughs> I, I could take a nap. What are what are three things that people do not know about the legend that is Miss Laura? Uh, like anything. Anything, anything that you want your fans or the people listening to this podcast to know. Oh, man. <clears throat> so I guess one thing, <laughs> when you ask me great questions like that, it's like my mind goes blank and I literally can't think of anything to say. <laughs> um, but the first thing I'll say is, fun fact, sort of, I guess, um, I'm a huge true crime fan. Oh, boy. Huge true crime fan. Um, people laugh at me because I will, I will spend hours listening or I'm not – I. I've been told to listen to a few true crime podcasts, which I sometimes queue up on a long run when I'm out there by myself, but oh, I love oh. watching. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> that sentence came out. <laughs> <makes me>. Oh <laughs> boy. Lord, gee, Lord have mercy. Oh my gosh. Um, so again, that escalate that went a weird direction. You weren't ready for that. I just came I, at I, you. <laughs> listen, I wasn't ready for that. I wasn't ready for the person who died in the marathon. As a <laughs> yeah, I know, I'm a, with a lot of dark, a lot of darkness. Oh, um, boy. I love true crime. I'll just, I'll just. This is lactic that. acid uncut. Oh man. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you didn't know what you were getting pulling me on. See, this is your first marathon cross country girl. Are you regretting it? <laughs> Hey, am no, I taking I, the show in a weird direction? I feel like I am. I like no, I'm gonna I'm gonna say my prayers, take some melatonin, <laughs> and I'm <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go to sleep. So, so you like listening to the darkness while you run true crime stuff? Like I, I don't often do it while I'm running. One of my friends, my good friend, shout out Lindsay Flanagan, who's also a badass marathoner in her own right. Uh, she's a huge true crime podcast junkie, and so she will listen to true crime while she's out doing like 18 miles by herself. <laughs> um, oh, so she's the one that kind of like put that idea in my head. Okay. Uh, but I, I mostly watch it. I love true crime documentaries. I minored in criminology at CU. So okay. I'm just kind of fascinated with that side of things for whatever reason. Um, so that's a fun fact about me. Um, but then I, but then people laugh at me because shows like Ozark, which is very popular, I only got like four episodes in and I was like, yeah, this is too dark for me. And people were like, it's too dark for you. Like you watch two crime documentaries of like serial killers. Like how is this too dark for you? I don't know how to explain it when it's fictional. Be it's I the storytelling. with the darkness. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it, it's, there's a difference in a story and storytelling when it's real than when you're yes. trying to fabricate it through a television show. Yes, I don't know how to explain it, but for some reason watching fictional shows like that I get more anxiety and I get upset when the characters are making like bad decisions that you know isn't going to end well like I 
I get worked up and I can't like, I can't deal with it. But then when you're watching something that's like real that actually happened, it's just different. So anyway, I don't know how to describe that. But yeah, I struggle with shows like Ozark. But then here I am watching, you know, all this crazy stuff on uh, true crime documentaries and all this terrible stuff. Anyway, so uh, that's number one. <laughs> Where do I go from there? <laughs> Let's see. Um, okay, this is embarrassing, but I'll share it. I feel like this is a safe space. I am that girl that September 1st, ordering pumpkin spice lattes. I am going to Target buying the pumpkin cinnamon fall. Ain't nothing wrong candle. with that. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. I just went into Target the other day and they had to get a new supply of candles and everything. <laughs> no, you you're good. Me, you know, I love that. I love lighting fall candles. I love getting all of that stuff out. I am that person because like you, I love the holiday season. Fall is one of my favorite times of year for everything. I just, for pumpkins, for sweaters, for marathons, for you know, just Thanksgiving and then rolling right into Christmas. I'm a December birthday. So, okay. you know, this is a good time of year. Once we hit September, I'm like, I really come alive. I thrive. You know, once I hit September 1st, get that pumpkin spice latte. I'm like, let's do this. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. So, okay. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, <laughs> okay. we'll one... to unpack here. <laughs> no, listen. No, and that's a good thing. So, one more. Last one. What's the last one? <clears throat> What's the last one? Um, <clears throat> okay, if I could sit down with anyone <clears throat> and have dinner, dead or alive, oh, someone asked me this recently, I would sit down with Dave Chappelle. So I asked that question. We do rapid fire at the end. So uh, now that you've answered it, I have to take that one off. Oh, you're welcome. To, <laughs> take that one off. <laughs> I have to take that one off. <laughs> And, and, and think there's of so many one. people that i would obviously want to do that with but big dave Chappelle fan so i would i would love to sit down and just i don't know so you're not weird <clears throat> so here's the thing my i always I, every show i tell an embarrassing story um of mine so this is a safe space because i try to tell a story that's more embarrassing than the one that is told to me by the guests <laughs> sometimes it does not no work <laughs> uh, <laughs> not yeah, it's, a, it's a risky game <laughs> it's 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 a high risk because sometimes i'm listening and i'll have a story lined up and they'll tell me it was like oh got to put that one deposit that back in the bank <laughs> um the fall thing so for, for me personally i like fall i know it's like maybe not as masculine whatever but for me, my grandmother, she passed away when I was two, mm -hmm. and that was my first experience with death. And so I just blocked her completely. I don't remember what she looks like, anything about her. But what she loved was the holidays. Mm -hmm. Like we did it big, Chris, all that stuff. So that kind of, so, but that's my like connection to her. Um, what brings me peace our holidays so we get it cracking early you know i already told you you know listen i already got the playlist ready and everything <laughs> I, I have to you know have to make a couple call and download a couple more songs and everything shout out to pandora because it gets me right every holiday season which for me starts <laughs> the first day of fall and and we're coming shout out, hot on that yeah <laughs> uh to like today i mean for all this will be posted next week, you know, so today, you know, is a big day because I always listen to Earth, Wind and Fire September because do you remember the 21st night of September? And so when that clock strikes 12 uh, in two hours and I don't know what that, I'm not good at math, but over two hours, listen, you better believe um, <laughs> You got that, that playlist queued up. <laughs> listen, the first song of the year is going to be Whitney Houston's Joy to the World, and then we're going to move to you, Soul. You start strong. Well done. <laughs> that's light. Off. That's light for me. Then we're going that's to move. Yeah, that's light. That's, you know, that's just, that's a warm up to the warm up. That's a teaser. Okay, I got you. That's a teaser. That's like the assistant to the assistant regional manager. Okay. <laughs> um, and then we move to the OJ's Christmas just ain't Christmas without the one you love and then we move to the sounds of blackness soulful holiday so listen I got it and I have you like got it. I have you know when you're working at home and stuff like that 
I'm not I hate pumpkin with every fiber of mm. my being um and I discriminate against people who like it <laughs> so I actually don't awkward can... should I do you want me to leave do you want to just call I it don't. No, 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 can no, we no, save no. this <laughs> no 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 we're, we're gonna say it's okay listen again it was a joke there's no discrimination on this show like I said all thriller no thriller you know I thought this was a safe real. space <laughs> it is a safe space it is a safe space for you to come and share your pumpkin needs and thoughts and wants and cravings even though I have do no you have a holiday for... like favorite thing though you know like it's not pumpkin for you but like what peppermint what do you... okay I like the mint, the mint. And so like Thanksgiving, like early fall is like apple kind of harvest because that's the Thanksgiving-ish. Mm -hmm. And then the more minty yeah. blend, um, you know, that's that's Christmas. And I mean, I'm talking to greatness, talking to you because you share a birthday in the same month of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So, I mean, that <laughs> means you are goated. Like, come <laughs> on, man. Um, Nice. Why do you love why do, why do why do you love it so much the holidays? Um I mean I grew up in a family that like did holidays big as well. Yeah. Um you know my dad's birthday is in November like right around Thanksgiving and then you know December my parents got married. Uh their anniversary is in December and then my birthday and then Christmas and it's just you know my grandma would come down every year and spend Christmas with us which was one of my favorite things growing up as a kid and it snows, you know, I grew up in Durango, uh, in Colorado. So tons of snow, like why, I don't know, like holidays just always remind me of some of my favorite, like memories growing up as a kid and just spending those moments with people that you love. And just, I don't know. I just, I just love this time of year, I think for a lot of reasons, but I grew up in a household that really, you know, celebrated <laughs> so many different things throughout this time of year that it just always kind of like, makes me think of all those things once we kind of hit like September October you're like oh man it's like my dad and I were talking the other day we're like oh it's our favorite time of year <laughs> I'm like so. nostalgic because there's a song I listen to by Tori <laughs> Kelly and uh in the RE it's like Christmas is my favorite time of the year and I play it non-stop it just brings me comfort your yeah comfort more... yeah yes it's, that's it's how it like... feels holiday season's kind of like comforting just again with how I grew up I just like still feel that you know yeah it's like a good crispy piece of fried chicken <laughs> yeah. or at least to me <laughs> and you know I love fried chicken <laughs> listen this spot listen uh, my motto I wish I had my shirt I have like two fried chicken shirts one is like the one says <laughs> I like fried chicken and three other people and then the other is two pieces in a biscuit with two pieces of chicken running away from the biscuit in a bucket <laughs> oh uh, my god I love it so you know listen it's a lifestyle for me okay uh, if i fly you out here you have to bring those shirts you have to wear those I, okay so the two piece in the biscuit one is one let me see if i can i don't know if you can <laughs> see it on so here funny. <laughs> I, yeah i don't know if you'll be able to that. see it i posted it like on my personal i'll have IG, to go check it out ig but like this is the low you, you probably can't see it let me see no, if I, I can't see okay, it okay cool darn this is so this encouraging but yeah um i'll have to check it out i'm so yeah, curious that i want to see it <laughs> it's 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 I'll, I'll see if i can show it to you after but yeah like that's that's my jam but your like love for the holidays is a perfect hallmark movie yeah i love i love hallmark movies too another fun fact about me so there you go. I'm honored that you said that. <laughs> it is a perfect, you know. Now, it, you know, if there's some darkness in there, then you know you can call Lifetime. <laughs> but you know, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I love a good Lifetime too. You know, you gotta you gotta balance, right? <laughs> Lifetime has slightly better movies. Um, they are a skosh better. <laughs> they are a skosh better. Just a just a skosh, a dribble, just a, a skosh, dribble, yeah, not, yeah, a dribble, not a downpour. <laughs> um, speaking of the gram. I, in preparation for this, I saw a picture I needed to ask you about because I, I was hyped when I saw it. 
I can't pronounce this band's name. I'm not even going to try to pronounce this band's name, but there's a song that we used to listen to before football games called Party Like a Rockstar. And when I saw you on stage, that lyric, <laughs> I am on a money making mission, but I party like a rock star. Can you please tell the people? Like, I was like, okay, you see, this is my track and field. It's about you got to jam. You got to jam. I love dancing. Oh, that's a fun fact about me. I took like three dance classes in college. Um, oh, really? Terrible at all of them, but I love dancing so much. So anytime I get a chance to do that, I go all out. I'm so. not. I'm not even mad. The fact that you did it on stage <laughs> with this band, <laughs> and they're just like so mellow, so chill. Like you, you know, a band is fire when the bass player has the, the guitar to his kneecaps and he's just like dropping low and playing and everything. Yeah, so this like, band's legit. And the cool thing about this band is not only are they local, they're a Denver bass band, but the drummer who rocks is my practitioner and one of my best friends. No so, way. Yeah, <laughs> but he's a rock star. He is actually a rock star. It's so awesome. Um, and I'm a huge punk rock girl. I love punk rock. Uh, or that genre, um, which is what they play. So I, I actually really do love their music. Um, so any chance they played at the Fox Theater uh, back in April, uh, and that's where I, <laughs> that's where I was on stage like rocking out. Um, which was a, it's a really cool venue here in Boulder on the Hill, um, and they got to play that, and it was so awesome. It was really Listen, cool. I so. was, I didn't even know what they was playing. I was like, I see you, I see you, see you. those marathon runners. They they're breeded differently. They're legit. Yeah, we are a different breed for sure. That's so. That's like your, um, like your regular mm. doctor that you go to. Yeah, I see him every week. Um, and I fly him to all my marathons. Um, wow. With me. So yeah, that'd be yeah, cool. He does, like, like he's like, like a hey, guy. oh, I thought he was just like your regular family doctor. That would be like weird. Like, hey, you have <laughs> that's what I thought. I was like, hey, you have a sinus infection. Like, By the way, are you yeah. okay? Are By you the coming way, tonight? Come to the show tonight? Yeah, it's like, oh man, all you need no, is some. He's like man. my sports uh, massage. Uh, um, okay. Who I see for like rehab and just like making sure everything is functioning properly so I can train and race marathons. Um, he's that kind of guy, that kind of doctor. Oh, I'm thinking like <laughs> you're. Right I love through. you're like family medicine. That's sick. He just gets up on stage, <laughs> drums, be... and then just rolls back in. That would be really cool. I bet someone out there does that. Oh my god, that would be so weird. Like. Right? Like, like talk about two different lifestyles like two <laughs> different personas it's like you need to go to bed at a decent time and make sure you're eating your vegetables and make sure you're getting rest and it's like one o'clock in the morning and you see like your primary doctor just rocking out or whatever the case might be <laughs> you're uh, like wait that's that dr joe oh my god <laughs> or you go to a concert and you have to see him the next morning like hey doc you did crazy you did great last night <laughs> yeah. um but punk rock what's some of the go-to bands let's go some of the go-to <clears throat> punk rock bands well i was obviously a big blink fan um i loved good charlotte um third eye blind um it's like kind of alternative i loved like goo goo dolls um i loved uh bowling for soup loved them um god who else fairy mia obviously that's the band that i'm always dancing on stage for okay. <laughs> um I, yeah I, I love i love that genre i just feel like when you listen to those kind of like songs like you can't help but like not feel good you know and kind of just like get pumped up regardless of kind of where you are I just feel like it always just like makes me feel like it brings me back to like the moment and just kind of like feeling good you know whatever I'm going through Listen, uh so big fan of that genre there's two things I feel so bad like a nerd is not a strong enough word because I know none of the things <laughs> that you mentioned I had there was one <laughs> punk rock song on my iPod I cannot tell you who wrote it oh I was gonna I say cannot... what was it you, you just know you don't know <laughs> I'm I'm embarrassed to say the song because I went to a Christian school and so uh it was not edifying and lifting up the name of Jesus but listen before gotcha. football games I was <laughs> But you I had was, that queued up. <laughs> I was like, hey, See, hey but you're getting hyped. You like it just kind of like you just can't help but like headbang, you know? 
Listen, also, I, I had banged so hard at one of their concerts that the next day, I think I had like whiplash. Like I like ooh. couldn't move my neck because uh, okay. I went too hard. So <laughs> you oh, got to be careful. Kids, you got to be careful. You can't overdo mm, it. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Gosh, just crack your neck after just, just rocking out in the name of rock, though. In the name um, of rock. <laughs> in the name of rock. No. Listen, that that music will get you. I'm not like I said. I don't want to say what song it was, but as somebody yeah, who sat on, going, though. as somebody who got pumped all the way to the bench, I was I was amped. I was I was there. I was ready. Um, when you are not falling so hard, what, what is life? What is life like? What is life like? Like explain it to us, common folks. What are some of the things that you like outside of running? Outside of crime and death and, <laughs> yeah, um, my, and party rock and, and pumpkins. <laughs> Listen, I'm not mad. I will say this. Carving a pumpkin is right? legit. It's it legit. is legit. I carve one every year. You have to. It's like my favorite thing. Um. Okay, what else? What do I love outside of running? Um. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know. Just like hanging with friends. Uh, I think it's really important to check out uh, of running. Um, and just yeah. find like that balance for yourself. Um, I know this involves running. Like I obviously coach a high school team, but for me, cause it, you're just on the, like, as you know, coaching and having competed yourself, you're just on a completely different spectrum of the sport. Right. Uh, and you're, it's about like, you're out there for like your kids um, and you're watching them grow and develop and like fall in love with the sport. And so that's always gives me really, that gives me balance. Um, and reminds me why I do what I do. Um, yeah, but just going out with friends, uh, dancing, um, in the off season, I will do the occasional hike. I'm not a big hiker, but I try and do other things that I wouldn't normally do when I'm training. I used to ski. I grew up skiing. I don't, okay. I don't ski as much anymore, but I plan to once I kind of wrap up, uh, my professional career. Uh, loved that that was always fun growing up I would run cross country and then I would just ski all winter uh, and then I would do track so I thought it was as a kid I think it's important to do a ton of other stuff like don't yeah. just specialize I feel like all these kids nowadays specialize so young and they play the same sport year round and uh, I didn't do that and I think not that it's a bad thing if you do do that but for me I think that's why I'm still running uh, was because I had that balance outside of it growing up so I try and keep that in different ways now um, with whatever it is, but just different interests, like going out to a concert or um, yeah, just simple things, going out to dinner with friends, going dancing with friends, um, just doing different things in the off season, um, trying to take a break from true crime, maybe watch the office, <laughs> balance it out. Do you ever watch <laughs> The Good dark. Place? Yeah. Light. I haven't watched The Good Place. I love um, it. You you will. All it, right, I need a show right now, so I'm gonna have to check the, that out. Listen, it you will not stop watching it. You okay. will not stop watching it. But quickly before we uh, get towards the end of the interview, you're so right on the coaching aspect because I th you see I I disagree with you when you said it's not a bad thing if kids decide to concentrate on one sport. I think it's a terrible thing to be honest yeah. with you. From the, if you specifically now if you're just somebody who's a casual high school, you know, athlete who just does it because you love it but you don't have aspirations to, you know, get to the next level. Mm -hmm. Then I'm not talking about, but I'm talking about these kids who are just god-given talent in that specific sport and they stick to it because there's so many they get burned out yeah exactly and there's so many you know you talked about you played soccer you played um you, you danced you skied and all of that stuff as somebody who rolled my ankle on the first day of skiing practice listen that builds <laughs> endurance Wait, where did you did you not grow up in florida or did you ski so, oh boy. So everybody on the show has heard this story. So I don't mind telling it again. I told you I would yes, tell you an embarrassing hear, story. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I knew I'd get one out of you. <laughs> oh, you'll get a few. Uh, senior ski trip, Breckenridge, Colorado. Okay, Breck. Okay, yeah. You saw <laughs> um, love that city. Would move there if it was a dollar cheaper. Um, <laughs> had great experience. Uh, somebody literally loved that city. Somebody... 
one of my first experiences, somebody came up to me trying to witness about Jesus, but they had a doobie um, in their mouth. And I'm like, okay, hey, <laughs> uh, this is how we rocking in Colorado. This is what I, we're I, doing. All right. I like I it. Think, I think it was in 2012 and I think it was legal or something. I'm like, listen, you know, you have some lungs because if you're smoking in this altitude, I can't breathe then you are walking um, we're talented out here yeah we can do it all <laughs> I, i'm trying to tell you get yourself some distant runners from the state of colorado uh what? best best hamburger best crepes love a crepe florida is different than colorado because of sea level and then altitude or whatever and so the basic things are different so i was catching l's when i got off the bus so Denver, we go to Denver, we go to Breckenridge. I get off the bus in Breckenridge. I have my little shoes on and everybody's like, you know, you got to be careful. And so I'm trying to get to where we're staying. And so have you heard the song Ice Cream and Cake? Like I ice cream and cake, so. ice cream and cake. Okay, well, there's a portion of the song that goes now slip, 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 slide, slip, 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 and slide. And so when I got off the bus, I slip, 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 and slid. <laughs> rolled your ankle getting off the bus no oh no we're getting to the ankle oh. part down the road <laughs> carrying and then I, I tried to give you two embarrassing stories and i'm like lord i can't even walk like what am i supposed to do like i can't even walk <laughs> in a straight line day two <laughs> ski day we had to walk a mile to the to the location i'm afraid of heights so i don't know mm. anything about a, a ski lift Oh, shoot. Yeah, that would have been and really aggressive for you. So I, I go and thankfully this place didn't have the lift yet. And I remember, shout out to Val Constantine because I told, that's the yes. story I told this. She was, that was the episode I told this story. I was trying to remember where I told the story. Shout out to Val. Awesome. Uh, doing incredible things. And so I were doing basic ski lessons. And so my instructor in our group was this six, three line, former linebacker at the university of Virginia. And so you're doing like the pizza roll and then the French fry and all that <laughs> nonsense. And so um, pizza when I should have French fried and I don't know where I ended up. And so once I got found, we said, let's try it again. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> Lauren, when I tell you I decked this dude, I it's like stop, stop. I'm like, I can't. Boom. <laughs> and skis went this way. Yeah. Ankle, ankle went another way. Um, and I was in pain. <laughs> and then there was another and that was only day two. That was day two. So I said, let me get up and do it again. Oh, well, what what fresh hell was that? And so I fall again. <laughs> And I'm just, and I'm just in, in, I'm in pain. I'm struggling. So I was like, all right, my ankle is hurt. It's hurting. And so I did not know. I'm thinking that, you know, you know, you watch football, you know, somebody gets hurt. Your teammates come, you get on their shoulders. They carry you to the location. <laughs> Y'all don't do that in Colorado. In nah. They put me on like, I forgot what you call it. A toboggan. I almost called it. Almost <laughs> called it a gurney again because I called it that. similar. But similar you property. got these. There's these drunk people at this little bar area, and so there's like a these a couple hundred people. Beautiful. I don't even know where it was, but beautiful. And so I'm on this toboggan, just roll into the camp, and then they have a moment of silence, like as if I like as if I'm <laughs> if I'm gone. As if and you, you've left us. As if I'm left, if, if I'm gone, if I'm like the guy delivering the note, you know, to, to the other side. And yeah, that uh was, I did not ski after Have you that. skied? As we say, you haven't skied since. Nope. I did. I tried snowmobiling. And so oh, okay. they were like, you can did go that to take better? No, it actually was worse. No. Because, okay. you know, those snowmobiles are expensive. So you should feel so much yeah. better about this, after, especially after this story. So they were like, you can take the scenic route where you just drive donuts around the lake or you can go up the mountain. So I'm like, I'm going up the mountain. I'm brave. <laughs> I'm Dominique. I'm going to do this crap. Well, I'm the last one in a group of eight. And so there was a part of the mountain where you go straight up. 
I went straight up, and you're supposed to curve down. That didn't happen. <laughs> no curving for you. <laughs> Passed out when I got at the top, woke up, and I see the snowmobile flipping down the mountain, cracked and broke. So you like passed out and fell off of it, and then it just proceeded I was, to roll I down was the that mountain. Hot. Yep. Oh and my I lost God. my group, and I'm just laying there. And one of my classmates was like, "Dude, I thought you were just like taking a nap or getting a tan." I was like, "Are you? Are you? Are you kidding You're like, me? really? You thought that was part of my plan? Just I'm just gonna get off here. Just you know, hang out. It's nice up here. So I'm if, all in. <laughs> yeah, you know, I can't even breathe and I'm just going to lay in the <laughs> snow and, you know. So if you ever say, dang, I had this is so embarrassing. Ask yourself this question. <laughs> WWDD. What would Dominique do? Or better yet, WDDD. What did Dominique do? And that should make you feel <laughs> That'll make better. me feel better. Yes. I story i think is more embarrassing but i don't know if i want to share it <laughs> that's that's okay i <laughs> don't think it could be that embarrassing i mean uh, it's hard to beat uh passing out of a snowmobile and then spring <laughs> hurting your ankle day two of your ski trip and being carried down on a toboggan it is hard to beat those two stories <laughs> exactly so you see you have nothing to be embarrassed about i feel Any, better now yeah <laughs> yeah what 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 did the kids say back in the day anything you can do i can do better in everything yeah. <laughs> including embarrassing stories including embarrassing stories you can do those almost better <laughs> so i'm gonna i want to get off this um yeah okay let's uh, circle back let's circle Multiple back sports yeah <laughs> no we're gonna you. we're gonna go we're gonna no 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 because i have to go to therapy uh, oh. <laughs> to get over, no, for, to get over that, I have I have to see somebody. But still dark. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna go to pizza. Then we're gonna talk just a little bit more track. And we're gonna get rapid fire. Why deep dish? And Colorado because has I... some good pizza. L let me just say this: we do. I, I don't know. I think Audrey Jane or Aubrey Jane mm. pizza yes. on Triple D. Um, yes, so oh. good. I used to work at a running store that was like right in front of Audrey Jane's. So, so good. And then Pizzeria Locale uh, is my other favorite here. Um, it's like, it's like more like wood fired pizzas, like Sicilian style pizzas. Uh, but both of those are mm, hard to beat. Hard to beat. Why the deep dish? Because that's just nasty to me. I'm sorry. Well, Shout I'm out to cross. Uno's, but. Oh my God, you're pumpkins and now deep dish <laughs> so oh, let me just say this i cannot i can't <laughs> damn it <laughs> yeah i can say that that's nasty i'm good i'm sorry shout out to uno's because i used to <laughs> this is how much i don't like it uno's pizza was a chicago style pizzeria we used to go there all i remember the time, that like every yeah, yeah i remember uno's deep dish pizza you think i got the deep dish i was like how thin can you make this dough and i used to get the thin crust i don't want to see the crust i don't even no. want to see it <laughs> if the crust rivals my height then that's enough so see i'm a crust person i think that's probably why i like deep dish and i know this isn't like great pizza but all we had when i was growing up in durango was a pizza hut and I would always want to go there <laughs> for my birthday. When I'm, I was sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm so I sorry. I wanted the deep dish pizza pizza because I loved the crust. I also really liked the crust that had like the cheese in it, like the stuffed crust. That was good. Just love a good stuffed crust. Um. So yeah, I'm just like, I love the crust. Like I'm a big crust person. I like to dip it in ranch. I'm a big ranch person. Another fun fact about me, I'll dip like anything in ranch. It's like my favorite thing. So I think that's part of the draw. Oh, I got a few. I got some my my <laughs> journalist senses. So <laughs> you gonna pizza? hate on me for that? <laughs> no, no, no. Pizza Hut sold deep dish pizza, or yeah. was it just? So you just? Okay. I guess I I thought it was deep dish, but you know, like the thick crust. Oh, like it was like a thicker crust. Maybe it was that... just like the Pizza Hut traditional crust, but it was like a thick crust. That I thick love crust, that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Listen, Pizza Hut low key used to, I I was I'm I was never I Pizza, Pizza fan. Hut. I was oh, never man. Pizza Hut fan. But that was still as much as I hated it, that was still kind of like what you ate. Yeah. Um now I the cheese. Yeah, the cheese. I'm a big ranch brother myself. 
especially oh, over some wings and anybody oh, who's seen... yes i love wings love oh ranch my gosh. so on we have a youtube exclusive series on the show called uh bucket of fried chicken and track talk where myself and guests <laughs> indulge in wings um and ranch and we talk track and field that's Post awesome man. Post marathon, we have to get you on that show. I was gonna say, I want to be on that. Can you? I yeah. want to add me to the list. <laughs> uh, yeah, trust me, we we will have you on that show. Post marathon or carb loading, so we can, yeah. you know, <laughs> <laughs> or right before, <laughs> or right before the night before. Instead of freaking out, we'll just. It could be it. my last supper. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going out to battle. <laughs> oh my gosh, going to battle. <laughs> oh, okay. Let, I got to go to sleep tonight, so I don't want to talk. Okay. About <laughs> See, this is why I don't run. Oh man. <laughs> Um, gosh, what was I gonna say? But you dip the cheese in the ranch sometimes. I've never okay, learn something new every day. So, you got, I the mean, boot. I the ranch is mostly there for the crust, but right sometimes I just, yeah, I just throw the whole thing in there, you know. Like, I, I gotta give a shout out to my girl T who hooked me on this is a weird one for you, but it actually slaps. If you have fish, do you eat fish? Yes, dip it in ranch. Really, like any kind of fit. Like I ate salmon last night. Like, could you dip salmon? Salmon. Really? Put. Some, All right, I'm not gonna hate. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm gonna try that. Don't like drench it on there, but just, just like a little, just a little. little. I'm the the flavor enhancer. Okay. It is like the, uh oh boy. It's like the crystal light of Flavor Town. Um, it's so light. <laughs> that's the best example that I can like, yeah interesting it's, you went with that <laughs> I couldn't think of anything else and I don't I think maybe the older no but I got you I remember crystal light I got you yeah so <laughs> I, it's, I can it's, roll with that it's the crystal light flavor <laughs> enhancer of flavor town um <laughs> tr trust me and please let okay. me know when you try it I will. Um, I'm going to try that next time I do salmon. Because again, I always have a bottle of HV in the fridge ready to go. So I'm going to add it to the salmon and just I'll see. You yeah. are old school and I love it because nobody <laughs> understands. These kids don't know about Hidden Valley. No, they you don't. Know, they do oh, not know about Hidden God. Valley. They no. do not know about Pizza Hut, granted, because they're closing, which yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> stuff. R A P. What was the best? I know some of the great stuff. They don't they'll never know. Oh, you know? like I used to go to Blockbuster and movie stuff. Blockbuster. Style, and... I still have a VCR. Same? Actually, no, sorry. I have it's a DVD player. Sorry, take it back. But I still have a DVD player. I have so many. My parents still have a VCR. I have so many. I remember we used to go and get the VCR cleaner. And you put yeah. that tape in and yep. they used to clean that VCR you in 10 to. minutes. You had to to keep it. I don't know what it did, but that thing has some wonder working power. And then you can listen, kids. Kids, you guys still never know. VCR, look it up. No Save such thing as no <laughs> such thing as Netflix. No such no. thing as Hulu. None no. of this. None of you this. You had stuff. to remember when like an episode would come out, and you you only got that episode. So my friends and I would do like viewing parties yep. every week of an episode, and then like that was it. You had to wait a whole other week, or you had to wait like a year for the next season. Like you couldn't binge no. watching. But now when I do like Netflix, I'm like, man, how did I ever like make it a whole week without like without knowing what was going to happen? Because you learn you learn to do it. Like <laughs> I know, were, but I. I I feel like no, I'm unlearning now. But <laughs> I like, couldn't well, do yeah. it now. It's like a new normal. Like there were no phones. Like no. You there were no spoilers. No. Uh, no one of, knew what was going to happen. You were no. all in it together. And you had to sit down and watch it. Mm -hmm. And the only way you connect is you had to go to work or school the next day and say, child, yes. did you see what 100%. went down on the Rugrats tonight? Like, yep. That, that was <laughs> Rugrats. You're bringing in all the good ones. Did you that, watch that, Hey Arnold? I love Hey yes. Arnold. Yes. Shout out to Dr. Hannah Borstein because we actually did an episode centered on the show centered around Hey Arnold uh, and nice. how it compares to track and field. Rugrats <laughs> is my show. <laughs> I love it. That's so it's, great. I need to listen to that. <laughs> Rugrats is my show. Hey Arnold, Rocket Power, Doug, Rocket Power, Doug. Doug. Oh, yeah. Cat Dog. Ah, oh, real monsters, oh, angry man, beavers, Rocco's modern life. 
Um, oh. Yeah, all the greats, man. I'm trying to think of the other ones I watched, but I was a big Nickelodeon fan. Listen, that was, and then they had you know the more you know exclusive shows, the Keenan and Cows, all of that. Oh um, yeah, the Nick Amanda at Show, yeah. Nick at the Night, Amanda Show. Oh God, yeah, I loved Amanda Bynes. Oh big fan. gosh. And then, like, when you needed to know politics, you didn't go to CNN. You didn't go to anything. You know what you did? At 8.30, you stayed up and watched Linda Ellerby. And I she... I watched her. <laughs> yeah, I did not. That was, that's when I knew it was time to go to sleep. <laughs> and then and I would wake up, and then the TV kept rolling. See, now, I remember back in the day, TV went off. And all you saw was the Star Spangled Banner playing at 4 o'clock in the morning. You had to, you know, <laughs> use the bathroom or something like that. But um, I used to watch Nick at Night. I used to watch all the old shows. Yep. Classic. Man, the classics. Laverne and Shirley and all that and stuff. Shirley. The, the yep. Jeffersons. Gosh, why are these? Why, why Boy, can't we go back? I know. Boy it's Meets a, World. Boy Meets World. I was going to say, I love Boy Meets World. Maybe they did like a spin off, like a. Yeah thing like uh, something recent with that where like they all came back i didn't watch it but yeah, people were talking about it i don't know if you spin- can do that i'm not a big fan of spinoffs yeah you just can't cre- recreate what was thank you thank you that's like trying to put toothpaste back into uh the the container. definitely can't do that the tube you can't do it once it's out you know yeah, it's out it, it's out so let's stop trying to do this crap <laughs> they have the rug racks like in 3d now like yeah listen when dill no. came it, it kind of went you know <laughs> you know kids yeah. are uh, kids are a gift from god but you naming your baby after pickles like your whole family yeah, is, a, <laughs> is a side item <laughs> it's a side item that you get on a hamburger or something like that that you got to pay a dollar for uh like, all like the extras like, like, like come on like tommy <laughs> dill pickles and chucky, Ch- chucky fenster <laughs> phil and <laughs> phil and angelica Di- angelica pickles Stew pickles, like what stew. beef stew pickles? Is that like the first name or something like that? Um, stew pickles, Lou pickles, DD pickles. I don't even know D-D, what that is. That's right. I don't, I don't know what that is either. And they, never, and, and they never and they never spelled it. Like, how do you spell DD? Like, I've never no, it'll that. always remain a mystery. We'll never know. Susie Carmichael. <laughs> uh gosh, um dill pickles pissed me off. I was like, God. I was like, okay. I was like, like, who knows? There, there were so many names. Um, but we can get lost in this. And, we could. And we could go down when, that rabbit hole. <laughs> when you when you come on the wings and hot take uh, yes. so uh I promise you there will be a segment uh specifically for Nick because I have done exclusive shows primarily on uh Nickelodeon. Nice. Uh, I want to so. dive into that. So we, wings and ranch. We talked that sounds five like minutes. the perfect show. <laughs> Honestly, we just sit up there and I do spicy so spicy wings. And like the last episode was more track and field centered, but um and we talked about how lame it is, how you know little they pay, but you know, mm-hmm. listen, I promise you, listen, just give me a couple months when it's like cold, <laughs> cold. I'm gonna reach out to uh, Laura. We have to do this, and then okay. we'll have. I'm Christmas so excited! Music. I'm ready. Yes, yes, we'll have Christmas music playing. Yes, and get some peppermint in there. Oh man, I can't wait! It's all and our a, favorite things. And a pumpkin. <laughs> we'll play that song. My favorite things. Yeah. Uh, Perfect. Yeah. So listen, be stay tuned for that. That's why you need to subscribe to the YouTube channel, Lactic Acid with Dom Smith on or Dominic Smith on YouTube. Subscribe, click that notification bell. Selfless plug right there. Before I forget. <laughs> Last topic, Chicago Marathon's coming up outside of the pizza and the hot dogs, which I am not a fan of. I hate hot dogs. I like you're not a hot dog fan. I randomly like a hot dog, but it's random. It's not something that like I I get pumped about. It's just random for me. Oh, that was the question I was gonna ask. I have to ask this before the last question. Best pizza currently. Uh best brand best chain pizza. Yeah. Best oh, best pizza. chain pizza. Yeah. I mean, I like Domino's. 
<laughs> what you doing? He said chain pizza. I know, <laughs> That's bro, all I can think of. I ordered Domino's like long ago. So that's what it came to my mind. <laughs> Laura, girl, that gave you're me never uh... gonna, <laughs> You're never gonna have me back on, are you? I have to, but you, you know, said at least I... I have to. <laughs> I have to because I promised you, but man. <laughs> Oh Lord! You said chain pizza. I know, but I thought you had a good chain. Not. Well, we used to have a Bojo's. I, but I, we don't have one anymore. I don't know who Bojo is or his family. They give but... me like honey with the crust. It was really oh. good. Ooh, okay, Bojo, brother Bojo, come to Orlando and let's make that happen. <laughs> Mine is Blaze Pizza. See, I don't know what that is. <clears throat> we don't have that out here. Bron, LeBron, I need you to hook them up. He owns the pizza joint. It is the best Shit, pizza. Does he? I want to. I want to eat LeBron's pizza. It is the best. Like it is wood fire or oven. Yeah, wood fired. Many pizzas. They slap it in the oven and it's ready. And Many listed. pizzas. Like they're like little guys. They're they're personal, so they're it's oh, enough. Nice. Okay, for a yeah. person. Um, you slap it in the oven and four. It takes about two to four minutes, and then it's done. That's how hot Dang. the oven is, and there's wow. somebody there. That's my it. kind of wait time. That's perfect. Two so it's minutes. like it's like Chipotle. So you go, what do you want on it? They put the sauce on, and then oh, you, you like toppings. build it. Mm-hmm. Oh, all right, all right. Two two to five minutes. Obviously, you know, for the more food, it, it takes longer. But yeah, two two to five minutes. Pizza done. Whip it out, and then you know you're ready. So do you remember, did you ever watch Seinfeld? There was a Seinfeld episode about building your own pizza or like also you had to like make your own pizza. Kramer's idea to like have a make your own pizza shop. And Jerry thought it was like the dumbest thing ever. He's like, who would ever (laughs) want to go into a restaurant and make like, why would you want to make your own pizza? And here we are where you're like, yeah, you make your own pizza. Yeah. LeBron owns it. It took off. And like it, idea. it took took <laughs> off. Like I love Blaze Pizza, like so much. Like you get that little char at the bottom, Oof. uh yeah. and everything. Ah, I'm t- if you're ever in like Orlando, okay, next time, I, next time I'm in Florida, I've been to Florida a handful of times, but next time I'm there, Blaze Pizza, Blaze Pizza, and okay. it's like cost efficient. Like a single pizza would probably cost like eight dollars. Oh, that's wow. So it's like it's a that's incredible. Like, I get two pizzas, one for myself, one for my mom for 16 bucks. Yeah, that's like bucks. one burrito at Chipotle. That's amazing. Yeah, and, and that's not even with for that. That's one burrito with no double meat. Or guac. <laughs> or guac. <laughs> or see, I haven't eaten Chipotle in a month because that 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 is spicy. It's spicy. <laughs> that is spicy. It's like, dang, like my dentist loves it because it's like, okay, well, those are opening up. Now, if you have a sinus infection, make sure you get the chicken um, yeah. because it will clear your sinuses. <laughs> um, extra kick to it. <laughs> it, it it's, 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 it's Dean Martin ain't that a kick in the head because, oh, that, that will set somebody free, that kind of spice. Um, <laughs> but, oh, man. There's a part of me that wishes, like, I just centered the entire show around the last three topics we talked about. Same. I know we hit some really good ones at the end. Um, but I, I listen. I promise, Laura. Okay. We're we're gonna make this. We're gonna make this happen. We're, yeah. The despite the fact show, that so. I said Domino's for my chain pizza, you have to have me back on because you promised. <laughs> but maybe they have was... a garlicky crust. It's good with ranch. Don't judge me. <laughs> okay I, I don't listen I, 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 I okay I lord have mercy so what is it that you're looking forward to <laughs> uh, with the there's no judgment no discrimination I just think that you know what we know what it is about Domino's you found out that you get insurance for free if you drop your pizza <laughs> on a commercial it's and true. you said so you've had experience dropping pizza before no, I haven't. I mean, no, I say true because I've seen that commercial. I've never okay. done it. Okay. But apparently that's what they do. Garlic crust with ranch. It's like, yeah, it's like they do like a garlic crust on their pizzas and then you dip that in ranch. Oh, man. 
I dare you to try that and then come back at me with the Domino's. Stuff. Absolutely it's... not. No. no. <laughs> come no. on. When I was at UC... no, no. When, when I was at UCF, I tried Domino's again and uh they've had like a rebranding though like in the last like five years i feel like they're different now oh you okay i graduated in 2019 listen laura i was in school for a long time i was in school for seven years um yeah screwed up the first couple listen i (laughs) listen i'm not a partier i don't drink or anything and you know what it was? I was coaching and I spent too much time coaching <laughs> and a little less time in the book. So fair uh, enough. listen, fair when enough. you go to school, make sure you go into school to all you kids out there, get, take your grades and take your stuff seriously um, because it's very important. But what is also important, Chicago, Shot Town, home of the deep dish nasty pizza. <laughs> what is it that you're looking forward to the most uh with this marathon? What can we expect from the legend that is yourself? Um well this is my third time doing Chicago. Uh and I feel like I've never really gotten the chance to do it the way I know I'm capable of. Uh I had to drop out in 2018 with an injury uh and in 2019 I got a stress fracture like 16 weeks out. So I was only able to train like on the ground for like six weeks going into it, um, six, seven weeks. Um, so I never really got to it the way that I know I can do it. So third time's charm. Um, I put a lot into this block, knock on wood. I have stayed healthy, which is rare for me in a marathon block. Something always happens. Um, I did overdo it a little bit with training and got like myself in a little bit of a hole that I had to climb out of, but, uh, I remained healthy during that period. Um, so yeah, I'm just excited to go out there and just like really do it. I feel like I've never done Chicago. Um, so that's my goal is to just go out there and give it everything I have. And, um, I'm doing, I'm, I'm coming in healthy. I'm coming in strong. I'm coming in, in a really good emotional place um so yeah I'm excited and I just feel like the beauty of the sport is on race day you know it can be anyone's day especially in the marathon um so yeah I'm excited to just finally get a chance to see what I can do on that course what advice would you have for young up-and-coming runners from and this will be the last question and we'll hit the rapid fire um that look at you and it's like okay this is a person that I can you know look up to as a role model or model my you know, game after what piece of advice would you give them? Um, I would say there are no, there, there are no shortcuts. Uh, when I was a young athlete, I kind of got caught up, um, in some really negative cycles with like, um, body image and just kind of thinking that I had to look a certain way or, you know, have a certain body type if I wanted to be the best that I could be. And I was comparing myself constantly to other people. Um, And so I thought by, you know, developing these really unhealthy habits that that was essentially kind of a shortcut to get to where I thought I needed to be at that time. Um, So I guess my advice would be be patient, like, especially in the sport of running, like in the sport of track and field, like, it's a long game, you know, like be patient. Like as we were talking, like when you're in high school, when you're a kid, when you're growing up, like do other things, do other sports, do other activities. Like, you know, I think that's one of the things that really instilled the love that I have for it now, which I think is a crucial piece uh, to be able to do it at this level. Um, But be patient and just let yourself grow, let yourself develop. And remember that there is no one way to get anywhere there's a thousand different ways to get somewhere and your journey doesn't have to look like someone else's um and so don't think that it does and then get caught in that cycle of thinking that you have to do all these unhealthy things to get there um you'll get there in your own time um and again it's the long game I'm 33 and I'm still doing it you know I started when I was 14 um uh so yeah just be patient with yourself and remember that um there's power in your journey and just to focus on yourself. Pastor, listen, I have to start calling you Pastor Laura because she dropped the <laughs> word right there for anybody listening, regardless of age. Um, you have survived the interrogation process. 
now still standing for... yes <laughs> and now. a rapid fire i'm starting to like sweat <laughs> i get like so nervous for these Oh, well, listen, this is just a... Uh, what are you going to throw at me? <laughs> oh, you're going to see. This is a simulation. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, for the, the final marathon. test. <laughs> yes. So I'm going to... This segment is called Down the Home Stretch. I'm going to ask you some rapid fire questions. Oh, I want you to answer them to the best of your ability. If I interrupt you to elaborate, that does not count against the time. If you do not answer these in the quickest time possible... It's really okay. It ain't no big deal. <laughs> we can still be friends, okay? Yeah, You're not going to like delete this episode. <laughs> no, listen. You and like I have failed. <laughs> you and I have gone on a marathon since we logged in. We've been through the peaks and the peaks of um, Nickelodeon and the valleys of Domino's, and so we are we are thriving. <laughs> um, you were playing to be a medalist on the medal stand. Um, so who are the gold medals? So you have Marley Stolper, you have Karen Winger, you have, I forgot the rest, but there's a few people. Carrie Tolson, um, you are playing to be a gold medalist in that distinct honor. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. <clears throat> deep, deep breaths. You got this. Okay. If there was that. a food, if there was a food that you had to live with and a food that you had to live without, what would they be? Cereal, live with, onions, live without. If there was one meal that you could only eat for the rest of your life, what would that meal be? Tacos. What kind of tacos? Um, Baja fish tacos. Okay. Overrated food in america hamburgers what <laughs> <laughs> this don't count what? What, what, what what did the burgers do to you what they did, what did i they do? okay i like hamburgers just as much as the next girl but i just feel like other things out there you know like i mean there's hamburgers on restaurant menus that are like twelve, fifteen dollars. Like, why am I paying that much for a hamburger? So, so overpriced hamburgers. Yeah. Okay. Overpriced hamburgers are overrated. Oh, oh my, <laughs> my, my soul. All right. When, <laughs> when is it acceptable? When is the acceptable time to start listening to holiday music? November. Ah, November twenty eighth. No, sorry. God, no. November first. Ah. November 1st. I, um, okay, listening to holiday music, in my head, I heard putting up Christmas decorations, okay. which are different timelines for me. But holiday music, like Christmas, I bust out my Celine Dion Christmas album, like around November 1st. Oh, so you go hard, hard. <laughs> like, okay. I so, love that album. <laughs> so you don't ease into it. You just said, Let, let's go. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, I, I just dive in. So yeah, November-ish for me. <laughs> Oh man. Okay. Dream vacation spot. Oh, these are hard. Uh, a beach somewhere. If you weren't a runner, what would you be? Mm. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'd be a professional skier. Okay. Like slalom. Okay. What is the most underrated thing about Colorado? Um, how blue the skies are. Okay. If you had to be a guest on any <laughs> any talk show, uh, what show would you choose? Lactic Acid with Dominique Smith. Hey, that's what's <laughs> up. And that, well, that answer just got you the gold medal. So, uh, yes, <laughs> that's what we're doing. But you're still not done yet. We are almost okay. done. If there was a song to describe your life, what song oh would you choose? God. Um, all the small things, Blink 182. I'll you know that later. song. I know the song, and I'm trying All to the small, small things. things. Dun, dun. For whatever reason, yeah, I was thinking 
fucked oh, up kids oh, by yeah. Foster the People for whatever reason. Oh, I do know that song. No, not that song. <laughs> uh, I did go to their concert. Shout out to whoever Foster. Oh, no, you know what? Uh, it'd be, I'm really into Machine Gun Kelly right now. Sorry. I what? Do. What? Um, <laughs> oh, that's it. Um, mainstream sellout, Machine Gun Kelly. That's the one I would do. <clears throat> Change my answer. I did <laughs> <laughs> your silence scares me i don't know what you're there's thinking. just so much i did not expect <laughs> and machine gun kelly was certainly not one. Oh boy yeah gosh what was, my, what was the next question yeah, see, I'm gonna ask? wow that shocked you so much the game's like over now and you can't remember your next question if you i win had... again <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'm gonna have to take an ibuprofen. Um, <laughs> if you if you had to carve, what's the best pumpkin you've ever carved? Um, what did I carve last year? Oh, I carved the New York City skyline. I was really proud of because I'm not artistic and I, I spent a lot of time on that pumpkin because I was running New York last year. So I carved oh. my, I for good luck, carved okay. the New York City skyline. <laughs> What's more difficult, being a fantasy football owner or running a marathon? Running a marathon. If there was any, any day-to-day -day hobby or activity that you would <laughs> say needs to be added to the Olympics, what would it be? cross-country no 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 i mean like cooking or driving oh or... um <clears throat> ooh, cooking um day-to-day -day activity vacuuming because i would crush that <laughs> okay if you had to if you had to i'm still on this machine gun kelly stuff cause... yeah i was gonna say you've never fully come back from that i can sense it like, because i I just did not expect it. We were talking about heavy metal and all that stuff. And then she breaks down MGK. Um, and it's not, it's, it's seriously not judging. It's just it caught me off guard. Um, Lord have mercy. Uh, if they asked you, if Food Network came to you and said, listen, we want you to be a guest star on any Falls Food Network show, what would it be? Diners, drive-ins, and dives. That's the perfect answer. Last question. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Why does kindness matter to you? Why does kindness matter? <clears throat> because it's cliche to say, but the world needs more of it right now. We need, I think that honestly, I think kindness would solve so many of the issues that we're currently facing globally and especially as a country. Just remember that we're human beings and we're, you know, I just, I think we lose sight of the core of that sometimes. You have survived down the home stretch. <laughs> there, it got very... a little rocky there for a second, didn't it? I, I can honestly say, no, I am really looking forward to editing and re-listening to this episode because I, I have enjoyed every single guest that have that <laughs> that has come on my show. <clears throat> Because I love getting a chance to know you guys outside of the track and what makes you unique. And there are very few times where I'm legit stumped to like <laughs> almost a little flustered. <laughs> but listen, this is why. And listen, it is not judging. I think it's awesome. It's unexpected. <laughs> but I, all of these, everything that you said tonight, I can see why you're such a talented and great runner and why you're beloved in the sport by the people you run with by the people you train with and by your fans and why your ceiling is hotter than some fish grease on july at a family <laughs> reunion uh um, love that or some ribs at a cookout and so you're not from florida the south so you know we you know anytime you see you you hear you know some fish is frying some ribs are going on some ribs, and, you know it's you know, and some Al, some Al Green <laughs> playing in the background, or some Marvin Gaye. You know, it's hot. It is you hot. It's, <laughs> it's 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 hot, hot. Um, where can the people find you? Where can the people support your journey? Um, well, I I'm not a big. I mean, I'm trying to be better with my social media, but I just have an Instagram and a Twitter. 
uh, I don't have anything else like find that's, managing those too hard enough. <laughs> that's enough. I was so say. yeah, that's all I have. That's where you can find me. <laughs> and I'm um, really bad at uh, responding to people that message me on Instagram because I I always forget there's like a secret DM thing uh, that you have to kind of like find. Uh, so I miss a lot of things, but I'm trying to be better about that. Um, so you can always message me on Instagram. Uh, and I am trying to be better about responding. Well, you guys better be sure to root for Laura in the Chicago Marathon. Not just because she's going to fly me to cover her regional meet if she wins, but she is now family to the show and family always roots for family. I don't know. I forgot the exact meaning, but I did watch Lilo and Stitch the other day and Ohana <laughs> means family. And that's what you are to the show. I appreciate you coming on. You guys know where to find me until next time. Peace.